Hi, Dwayne back again to talk about Azure networking for Nutanix Cloud Clusters. Today we're looking at our two-tiered VPC model, focusing on the transit VPC, where we have an external subnet that whenever you create your own virtual private cloud networks, that they're going to attach and go out of the system. We'll also take a look at doing this both with NAT and no NAT. Let's jump in. Here we have a logical representation of our transit VPC. It's the top layer of our VPC model where the user VPCs would follow underneath. The transit VPC is created after uh, Prism Central is deployed and we start to set up flow virtual networking. We have an overlay external subnet, which is also created that will use the point to point network that is created automatically as well. The point to point network could really be any IP scheme. It's not going to be uh, seen on the wire. The traffic coming from the internal interface of the Flow Gateway VM uh, will redirect traffic to the external side. The external side has a native Azure Mac. Um, so we can use that to um, get ARP requests coming in. We have uh, a subnet range assigned uh, during the process. So here we have a slash 24 for our, our overlay external subnet, subnet NAT. Uh, we will use this OEN NAT in the rest of the diagrams as well. The, the VPC router is consuming one of the IPs from this OEN NAT. And as you create additional user VPCs, they will also consume IPs uh, out of that range as well. So here we have a user created uh, VPC, which is blue. Uh, by default, uh, we will not create a default route. So you'll have to supply that yourself to get traffic to go to uh, the, the OEN NAT and then it'll forward the, the traffic out. And so here we see that we're consuming uh, one of those IPs. So 10.75.161.2 is being consumed uh, for the source NAT IP for the VPC. Uh, traffic going e east-west. Uh, so regardless if it was just between two HV hosts or on the same, um, traffic flows pretty seamless. If it's going to uh, another host, uh, we'll encapsulate the traffic uh, with Geneve and forward the request on. And so, uh, you know, it's just going to flow to the other side. So this is a pretty easy use case on terms of getting out to a native Azure resource, or this could also be maybe you're going back to on-prem. So we have this 10.75.1.4 native Azure VM. Uh, VM1 wants to talk to it. So its source is the IP of the VM inside of the VPC and its de destination is the IP of the VM. When it gets to a logical VPC router, we encapsulate the traffic and then change the source to the, the VPC uh, source net. So it's going to be .40 here, and then we'll send the traffic out. And then it will also know how to get back um, to this 161.40 because it's um, a native Azure IP. And then the flip side, if we're like going in the reverse direction and this is a new initiating traffic, so we have this test VM wanting it to VM2, maybe VM2 is a web server. Its destination is 10.75.161.29. So this would be a floating IP, which would be assigned here. And so, since this is a native Azure IP, it knows how to forward the traffic to the Flow Gateway a virtual machine. It flows through, uh, and then we will uh, change the destination from the, the NAT IP or the floating IP to our uh, 100.1.2.11, and the traffic will flow through. Now with um, here we'd have uh, one routed connection going through our NAT, which we're going to keep the same in this example, but we also have the ability to have a way to route traffic without using a NAT. And so we'll just call this no NAT. And so what happens, you need to have an external routable prefix uh, configured for your transit VPC. Uh, you can have a pretty wide uh, range and so you can then cut up 
um, smaller chunks for VPCs that you create. This does need to have no overlap within Azure or your VPC model. Um, so we can uh, route traffic through. So if we go to the next screen where we have the ERP configured from our last example. And so here we have this new subnet within the same VPC uh, assigned. And so our OENAT is assigned a range, which will then also consume an IP address from that range. And then we have this subnet created, subnet-ERP, which is going to use a smaller subset of this ERP uh, that we've configured. So it needs to be a subset of the one above. And then from there, you can assign smaller ranges or the exact range. We're still having a default route uh, in our example that's going to be routed through the NAT. Uh, but for this particular subnet, so if we have a subnet range that's going to 10.75.1 uh, slash 24, which is this test VM, then we're going to route the traffic uh, through the no NAT path and get out. Uh, part of this, you also need to configure inside of Azure as you use your defined route. And so you're really just all traffic uh, destined to 20.20.0.0, which is our prefix here, we'll go to the flow gateway VM. And we'll show that in our next video, where we're gonna focus on Prism Central and our Azure environment. So here we have our VM in our subnet ERP. It's going to route out through to get to this test Azure VM. So the destination remains the same and our source is going to remain the same here. Nothing's going to change on that front because the Azure world knows about the subnet range now, it's being advertised. So we just go out, um, we have a default route for that subnet to go out through our no NAT path, and then it'll be uh, forwarded on and out to Azure. And so uh, that's how we're able to do both NAT and no NAT inside of our Nutanix cluster in Azure. Now that we have a complete picture of traffic flows in Azure with our Nutanix cloud cluster, let's take a look at the virtual flow networking inside of Prism Central in the next video. See you there.